It's about a two-hour drive, so I figure she's breaking all the speed records about now, trying to get home to me, Delia said, chuckling. But when I called her on Lisa's cell phone, I let her know I'm okay. Dad and Jillian are in San Francisco for the week, so it'll be a while before they figure everything out. I'll call them when I get home. I know my mom will find me eventually. I'm not worried. Actually, I'm kind of glad. I want to be here when Yolanda shows up. I bet she has a really big tale to tell, Randy said with a smile that tried to hide his concern. What about your dad, Randy? Delia asked. Is he still in California? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. She dug into her pocket of her jeans. Here's the money I promised you could borrow. She stuffed a balled up wad of money into his hand. I changed my mind. I don't need it. I'll be fine. He tried to give it back to her. Delia insisted. Now, shut up and take this. I know where you live. I'm not worried about getting it back. Just as Randy was about to try to refuse once more, a huge, towering figure of a man loomed directly in front of them. Hey, his voice bellowed. Are you two all right? I've been worried sick ever since I heard about the storm on the news. I had to chuck on my queen bees, and I guess that makes you the king or the prince. Or something, Randy. It was Bomani who gave them a both a big, comforting hug. Man, we sure are glad to see you, Randy said with sincerity. This has been one scary day. Miss Benson, this is Bomani, our double Dutch coach and real good friend. Miss Benson shook his hand and smiled. Where's Yolanda? Bomani asked Delia. Did she already find her mom and go home? Delia looked at Randy. We don't know, Bomani, she said, trying not to cry. Yo-Yo went to the bathroom just before the storm hit, and she never came back. She hasn't come out of the building yet. As far as we know, she's still in there. But they're still bringing out a few kids at a time. Bamani turned and looked at the severely damaged school and inhaled deeply. Oh my, he whispered. Oh my, Miss Benson said. Several students are still unaccounted for. I have two other students who are missing as well. I'm sure the searchers will find them all. They simply must. There was desperation in her voice. Has anyone that you know of been seriously injured, Miss Benson? Bamani asked. No, thank God. So far, only cuts and scrapes. The last time the police officer stopped to give us an update, she said that they were amazed at how few serious injuries there were. It's as if the tornado whirled in carefully, destroying the building but missing the students. I sure hope Miss Yo-Yo and her guardian angel had her with in the bathroom, Bamani mused. He turned to Randy. Your dad in town this week? He asked abruptly. Randy hesitated a moment. Uh, he's gone for a few days, but I'll be fine. I'll go home after Delia's mom gets here. You'll do no such thing, Bamani roared. When Delia's mother gets here, you're coming home with me until we can get in touch with your father. I don't want to be a bother, Randy said. You've got enough to handle with ten kids in the house. Can you wash dishes and small faces? Bamani asked him. Delia smiled at the thought. Sure, Randy replied. Then you won't be a bother. You'll be a help. Well, okay. Thanks, Bamani, Randy said gratefully. Hey, what about my cat? Well, we can stop by your place and she can come with us, Bamani offered. No, man. My cat would have a heart attack with all those kids. If we could just stop by so I could feed her, that'd be cool. No problem, Bamani said, turning his attention to the policewoman who was walking toward the little group. Miss Benson, said the policewoman in her usual formal tone. Yes, have you found them? No, ma'am. We have called for search dogs to assist us. We have done a sweep through most of the building, and, as far as we can tell, only those three students are unaccounted for. But there's extensive damage inside. A couple of stairways have been crumbled into piles of rock and rubble and are blocking our way. In addition, there are huge sections of walls that have collapsed, and we can't get past them yet. We have called for heavy equipment to help us clear the areas. Is the whole building destroyed inside? Miss Benson asked. Amazingly, the fireman replied. In some areas, the windows are unbroken and the floors show nothing more than the scuffed footprints of students who went to class this morning. In another area, the only problems were a water fountain that would not shut off and a clock that showed the incorrect time. Oh, that has nothing to do with a tornado, Randy quipped. That's the fountain on the second floor. It's always broken, and no two clocks in our building ever indicate the same time, Delia added. The fireman smiled and turned to Miss Benson. The parents of the missing students are here. Would you like to speak to them? Oh, yes, I feel like it's my fault. It wasn't your fault, ma'am. 
The storm is the criminal here. Mrs. Tolliver and Mrs. Pepper rounded the corner then, holding hands. Both women had been crying. Delia ran to Yolanda's mother and hugged her, letting the tears fall finally. I'm so worried about Yo-Yo, Delia sobbed. Where is she? Mrs. Pepper could not answer and let her tears join Delia's. Mrs. Tolliver stood to one side, silently watching. Miss Benson approached her. Mrs. Tolliver, I'm Miss Benson, your son's English teacher. Your boys were giving an oral report in class, a very powerful presentation, I might add, when the storm hit and they simply ran out of the room in the midst of all the confusion of thunder and screaming and flickering lights. I wonder why they ran out of the room like they did, Delia muttered loud enough for Miss Tolliver to hear. Mrs. Tolliver looked directly at Delia. My boys are afraid of storms, she said clearly. Randy, who was standing next to Miss Benson and Miss Tolliver, asked then, Excuse me, but did you say that Taboo and Titan are scared of storms? Miss Tolliver replied, Yes, but you don't ever tell them I said so. Their father got killed in a terrible thunderstorm when they were very young. A tree in our backyard fell just as he was running into the house. When I got home from work, I found the twins huddled together in the dark, their father lying dead in the mud in the backyard. They've been terrified during storms ever since. So that explains a lot, Miss Benson mused. I know you must be frantic with worry, Mrs. Tolliver, she added. There's no telling what kinds of memories a storm like this can stir up. I'm glad you're here so you can reassure them that everything will be okay. Let's pray they'll be found soon. I know they're big, and I even know they try to be bullies, but they're still my babies, Mrs. Tolliver said quietly. But what about all the stuff they said on the talk show, Delia asked timidly. Mrs. Tolliver sighed. My boys have never been happy children, but they're not bad kids, she began. They've never actually done anything wrong, as far as I know, Miss Benson told her, but they have managed to frighten quite a few people. They like putting on like they're mean, but they're really just two kids who are afraid of getting close to anybody. They use each other and depend on each other so much that they block out the rest of the world, even me. Dealey couldn't believe how sad she looked. They've managed to do a pretty good job of intimidating their classmates, too, Miss Benson said. I'm sorry, Mrs. Tolliver said. That television show was a mistake, she sighed. Money has been very tight lately. I'm only working part-time, Mrs. Tolliver continued, and I'm not going on welfare. I have no idea where they got my name, but the producers of the show called me and offered me more money than I could make in six months if me and the boys would appear on the program. I couldn't turn it down. I'm sorry if they frightened everybody. It was mostly big words and empty threats. The producers loved it. I told you those shows are fake, Randy whispered to Delia. A squawking noise interrupted the conversation. The policewoman spoke into the walkie-talkie on her shoulder and said briskly, Yes, sir. She turned to the group sitting there on the grass. You might want to come with me. Someone is emerging from the building. Randy grabbed Delia's hand as they ran ahead of the adult toward the school. Long strip of yellow caution tape had been strung around large areas of the building, but they ducked under it as they saw three dusty figures emerge, not from the hole where the front door had used to be, but from the side of the building. Taboo Tolliver, his black short turn, a huge bleeding gash on his chest, staggered forward. Next, to him, his stumbled his brother, Titan, his face dirty, his eyes blinking in the sunlight. In his arms, he carried the unmoving figure of Yolanda Pepper, her ponytail dangling.